It is 4.20 p.m. on the west coast where the molehill is located. This is molehill mining. I am old man Todd. I'm at the helm of this thing. Um, and every 12 hours or so, around 4.20, we like to take a little break, take a pause, see how the world's going, check on the prices, check on the news before we get back into work. So it is that time right now. And uh, what do we got right here? Let's take a look at what we got today. Sour kosher. K sour kosher. Kosher, not kush. Kosher. Did not know that rabbis bless cannabis, but if they do, it would be this one, I suppose. All right. Let's look at our top six performers by market cap. Market cap over here. This is the price of the coin multiplied by the supply of the coin for how much it is worth. Um, this is the trading volume for 24 hours. That's an interesting stat. Look at that. Tether traded a significant amount more. Hmm. Anyways, okay, market cap. By market cap, what's been going on in the last 24 hours? Bitcoin's down half a percent at 13,000. Ethereum is down 1.2% at 406. We just skip Tether. I mean, Tether's tight. Market cap is... Um, is big but the reason that we're not too worried about tether in terms of the market changing is it's not going to change the point of tether is it's tied to the u.s dollar so let's go down head to let's go to the third leader in market cap that's an actual crypto token xrp that is 25 cents down one percent bitcoin cash down 1.2 percent for a market cap of five mil uh-oh chain link is down 4.7% at 1214. So yesterday mark um yesterday chain length was 4.9. It was like right on the tail of Bitcoin Cash, about to knock Bitcoin Cash out of the top 5. Um arguably Tether doesn't really belong on this list, so this would be your top 5. Um so let's look at the biggest gainers of today and we can look at the losers too. Oh yeah, we can. Filecoin gained some ground back, 38 bucks. It's almost back up to 40 bucks where it was just not that long ago. Wow, this one is just a roller coaster, Filecoin, and we've been following it. If you've been watching the show, I've been checking on the news in uh, regards to Filecoin. I I meant to look into this. Uh, hopefully, I do before tomorrow's show. Um, yeah, Filecoin is a pretty wild one. It just launched, and they're already at 802, 820 million on a just launched token. It's a decentralized storage network. Um, there's been some speculation that it's not going well, that the mining is not going well. Mining this stuff is, like, outrageously expensive. It seems more difficult to get into a Filecoin rig than a GPU rig, and I can't quite um, can't figure out how that's going to work long term. But that's another show, which I really should do. Quant. Quant is up 14.3%. It's just been a steady climb for that coin. That's pretty de decent. Look at that, 50% on the week. Look at that, 50% on the day, though. That's gnarly for Filecoin. Reserve rights token, 12% on the day. Still don't know what that one's about, but it was on there yesterday, so it's been climbing the last couple. So that's one, two, three. Let's look at two more. Bitcoin SV, dude. I don't even know. See, there's all these crazy derivatives. I don't really care for them. I mean, it's a yellow B. I think they're just trying to actually get people who don't know what they're doing to buy their own coins, Honest, my honest opinion. And Elrond, don't know anything about it, but it's up 6.7. Ample's up 4.3. I like Ample a lot. Um, Okie dokie. Let's get to uh, Bitcoin itself. So this would have been last night. This is a 12-hour block that would be last last night into this morning. This would be 4.20 in the morning right here. Um, small decline last night, one. 0.14%, but then we have this 3% drop, or 2.5% drop, excuse me, over a 30 minute period. And I don't have any reason, any news that posted at 11 o'clock last night as to why that would be. Um, let's take a look at. Yeah, when's the last time Bitcoin got this high? So, what tends to happen too is people who make their money with mining or trading, they might set a significant amount of bitcoin to be sold at a certain price maybe that price was 13 320 or something and so once it got up into this range 
it triggered some sales look at that push and then boom like that excessive amount quantity of bitcoin coming onto the market maybe pushes the sales down uh the price down i don't know it could be it could be that that was the new high so it triggered a lot of sales i don't know any other news article or anything else that would have impacted it this here this blue line here is thirteen thousand. um i drew that a bit ago we've been talking about that and how that's sort of a psychological thing as you can see here as soon as the price gets under 13 that psychological thing kicks in a lot of people want to buy a lot of people probably set up their bots to buy if they're setting up automatic trades on stuff like that limit orders things like that they're going to set up all those under 13 because they're waiting for just to scoop up a little more under 13 so as soon as it gets under it bounces right back up right and then all those smart like automated buying process limit orders they're not going to purchase anymore if they didn't get a chance to get this piece right but then of course they start up again and then they start up again so it's it's about like automatic triggers i think a lot of the times some of the stuff you're seeing in terms of why this bounced back off of 13. i think 13 is going to be that marker where a lot of people are putting they're going to tell their limit orders to buy at like 12.9 12.8 and then a lot of people are going to come up here and they're going to say sell at 13.3, at 13.4. And so I feel like this is going to be our new channel for a little while here. Um, once again, if you find Bitcoin's moving sideways, which it's doing more and more lately. It's not historically what it's, it does. But if you find it moving sideways like that, then a grid trader is the way to go. I think that's what I do. Yeah, I mean... I don't know the everything above 1250 and below 1350 it's like you could have traded that grid the entire time and been been in profit every time it goes up and down so let's look at the last 12 hours pretty uneventful from this morning a slow climb if we look how that relates to the Ichimoku cloud what we see here is an enormous amount of, amount of resistance that collapsed um, to some ambiguity as the price moved into the cloud it didn't it said resistance but it wasn't very strong until it moved out of the cloud and then of course right when the so as, as the cloud changes its mind to become support bitcoin breaks through breaks breaks through the wrong way both times um but right now it appears that the price of bitcoin is riding on a support ichimoku cloud support of ichimoku cloud very thin layer of support um Seems like this time of day is like a hard day, hard time of day to predict or something. So every time I get on here, I say the same sort of thing, which is that the cloud doesn't tell us much right now. It's super thin. It's changing again. It it's only been in resistance for I don't know, like what is that? From 50 to 35, so 40 minutes of resistance, and it's going to flip back again. Um, and it's been pretty damn thin anyway the whole time here, so. Let's take a little more detailed look at the cloud and get a better sense of the individual indicators, but yeah, we generally want to see blue above orange. That's good. We want to see this purple line go above the price. Right now it's like right at the price, which doesn't tell us much. The price is climbing above it. This is a red indicator. Kind of leads me to believe the narrative that it's going to get it's going to hit more resistance up here um let's see if emas tell us much a lot of these emas are pointing up so that's that's a good thing yeah that might turn that might be good and i never really know how to read these they're widening though which tends to indicate well they, they tend to keep the price within the bands and so i don't know I think that's sort of developing. I don't think that tells us much. But let's look at the bands. Like at this stage. Yeah. I don't know. Honestly, don't know how to use don't know how to use that one very much. Let's check on it back in there. This is kind of interesting. Ele electronic vehicle grid integration. So, IOTA is one of the more like centralized blockchains. And it looks like what they're gonna do is tokenize credits. Hmm. I didn't read this one, I'll admit, I forgot to. <laughs> but 
Internet of Things, 5G. Yeah, it seems like this is just going to be a way for people to charge their vehicles and pay for the electricity they took somehow. And they're going to keep track of that by blockchain. Unsurprising. It's actually a good use of that technology. Oh, man. <laughs> Brian Armstrong, back in the news. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> During business hours, he tweets about politics riddled with falsehoods. Boy, boy, boy. Yeah. And so that's funny for him to write some kind of like political blog post because a bunch of his company quit over the fact that he told them all to be apolitical in this current climate, which is kind of a big ask, you know. Hmm. Well, 5% of the staff left. Blah, blah, blah. Silent majority. Yeah. Interesting. Well, <laughs> dude's in the news again for all the wrong reasons, so. Oh, this is just the front page here, but But yeah, let's see, uh, one last thing. Oh, US, UK clamping down on crypto trading. The somewhat, somewhat clickbaity title. The UK is doing a lot of clamping down on trading on a retail level. Um, derivatives of Bitcoin and other derivatives. That's important to know. It's not that they're trading, that they're stopping the trading of the actual coins, but it's stuff like options and other stuff that I actually don't really know how to do and don't mess with. Um, command of the U.S., died of the owners. So, yeah, so, I mean, the U.S. did crack down on BitMEX, which wasn't operating um, how they should have been, apparently. That was unclear, at least to me, until after they were arrested. I had no idea that they were, like, in unscrupulous uh, organization. The one thing I know the United States is doing is they are going to start looking... They're going to start um, requiring a ledger of all international transactions above $250. That level is currently 1000 I think. I think it might even be 2000 but it's a significantly smaller quantity of money. I'm, I'm looking for anything about the U.S., but this is really just all about the volatility. The British government's protecting its citizens from the volatility, of course, because as a citizen, you can't just, like, invest yourself and buy for yourself. <laughs> yeah, you have to be protected, I guess. Weird. It's almost like they're protecting their local currency or something, but no, it's the citizens that need protecting, mind you. Derivatives market. Yeah, so it's stuff like that. It's derivatives, options. Um, it's not the coins themselves, I don't think. And in, in the United States, it's more about a legal dragnet. There's, as far as I know, no changes in the way that we can trade, the way that we re report our assets to taxes, but... It's just that they are keeping track of a, you know, smaller amount of currency being changed. Not a ton of news today. Ooh, look at that. Bounced back nice since we since we left. Let's bring the cloud back on. Mm, still hasn't decided yet, but it could be changing back to support. So, okie dokie. That's Sunday for you. See you later. <laughs>